Hello there viewers, today in the shop we have my rusty 2001 Mercedes SLK. I bought this car about seven years ago, got interested in watching restoration videos and wanted to have a go. Um, so I thought I'd get this out of a rusty car and see where we go. Um, she's got the typical rear rust around the arches pretty rotten around here. Front wing uh, fenders or wings as we call them in the UK. They were pretty rotten. I've put new ones on the front. They will they're only just chucked on at the moment. They're not fitted. Um, yeah there's a bit of corrosion stains and stuff. I'm gonna give her a complete strip down. Um, you haven't missed a lot. I didn't start this from the beginning. Um, so far I've just removed the rear hubs. They're sat here. As you can see under here, everything's pretty rusty. Um, yeah, it's the muffler, more rusty. Uh, rear subframe's got surface rust. It's, it's okay. Um, stuff keeps falling off when I'm underneath it, but it's mostly surface rust. Rear shock, as you can see, is absolutely rusty. Uh, the rear swinging arm doesn't seem too bad. Surface rust, so that will come off. Rear drive shaft looks pretty rusty, so obviously we've got to get that off, cleaned. <coughs> yeah, another view in here of the wheel arch. They now do rear quarters for this car, so I will be buying whole new rear quarters, taking these ones off, putting new ones on. Now, I've never ever done anything like this before. This is all totally new to me, but the people on the net make it seem so easy and say, yeah, we can do this, so let's give it a go. I don't know. Um, yeah, come along if you want. Um, it'd be interesting. Sure, I'm going to make some real classic cock ups. Um, what I might do, because uh, just getting these rear hubs off was a, a bit of a marathon job. Um, the, try and get the rear discs off the hubs because it's got little drums inside the discs. They were a pain. I might reassemble one of them and show you the technique for pulling them. On the net they show them just sliding off but I had to release the um, parking brake shoes and there's a little technique I discovered for doing that so I might say reassemble to show you that again this side. Uh, nice and rusty. So yeah at the moment what I'm, what I'm trying to do now, where we are at the moment, bring you up to speed, is getting off the rear subframe. Um, because <clears throat> I want to be able to take the rear subframe off, totally rebush all the arms, clean off all the rust. I either buy new arms with bushes or I just recon these ones. I'd like to try and keep as much as possible uh, of the original, but you know, where it's not practical then I'll just replace it. Um, what else? So yeah, at the moment I'm trying to get the rear subframe off. So the next job off is going to be rear diff. Um, the drive shafts at the moment are proving to be a pain in the ass to remove. I've got some light in here. Alright, up in here we've got some male uh, Torx head screws that are on the drive shaft. I think there's six of them around there. And they're Loctited in and they are a pain in the ass. <coughs> so Bearing in mind I'm taking this whole back end off the car anyway, I thought what I'd do is I'd drop the diff and the drive shafts in one, get them on the bench and then separate them there where we can see what we're up to. Uh, rear spring looks alright, there's no corrosion on there, that's amazing. Um, yeah, so yesterday I pulled the prop shaft bolts, they're down there, there's six of those through a rubber coupling. Um, and I've started, because the next thing I've got to do to be able to drop the diff is drop the muffler. So, and I've just cut, there's three bolts holding the rear two boxes to the front. And I've just cut the bolts. I'll take you under there in a minute and show you what I've done there. And, um, oops, sorry. Yeah, this is where we are. If playing with rusty old cars is your thing, stick around. It's going to be fun. Um... Yeah, it's, it's funny actually because I used to watch a lot of Erico fixing cars and I always used to joke that, crikey, you'd love to 
be over here because where I live that you don't get rusty cars like this um, and now here I am with one so <coughs> yeah it's it's new to me this sort of level of corrosion I must admit I think Mercedes built these out of cheese grade still even though they had a 30 year anti-corrosion warranty I doubt they've ever paid on that because you know this is just mental um, yeah so yeah, let me take you underneath in a sec and I'll show you where we are with getting the exhaust off. Right, here we are, oh my god, <laughs> here we are, squeezing underneath the car. As you can see, hopefully you can see, she is sat on stands, the four corners of stands, uh, number one here, up onto the jacking mount. So she is quite safe, don't ever go under a car if you haven't got it safe, I know it's common sense. Right, let's have a look under here then. This is the. It's going to be hard to get much in the picture because obviously I can't get far enough away for the camera. Uh, that's the muffler, it's going to come off. Interesting on this one, there's a box at the back. I don't know if I can show it to you. Where is it? Oh my god, sorry about the dodgy camera work. There's a box here somewhere. Uh, and there's this pipe which comes to this small box. And. Uh, that is, there's no joints on that, That's, those two come off as one. Um, there's a small flange here before the front box. Uh, that one there's got the oxygen sensor on it downstream or O2 or whatever it is. There's a prop shaft up in here, comes through. There's the, the rubber joint, which I've taken the bolts out yesterday. Here, I don't know if you see that, I can't. <laughs> it's so hard feel, filming under here. There's a fuel pump and a filter. Um, you can see there's a lot of surface rust on this car. This isn't too horrendous in places. Um, oh, yeah, but I do want to get all this off so I can get that back to bare metal and painted and fixed. Uh, what Mercedes did when they realised there was a problem with these cars is they had them in the dealerships and they covered them in this white sort of masticky material to try and keep the water out and basically all they did was trap that bloody water in. They'd have been better off just treating the, the the rust and keeping the car clean as opposed to now basically trapping moisture against the already poor quality steel and that just caused it to rust even more. I'll get you around here as you can see you know this stuff is now coming off. But it, this isn't metal, this is the actual, um, like I say, the, the, the coating. So now you can find the, the metal underneath actually not too bad. And all this should clean up alright. Uh, oh my god, I'm stuck between the car. So you're going to have to bear with me with the camera work. Right, I'm trying to find room to move. I'm going to show you the exhaust flange in a second. Get some light on it. It's three bolts. Well, I, don't, I say three bolts. I'm not sure what the hell these things are actually. They, there's, there doesn't seem to be a nut. I think the the flange here is tapped, and I think because it's not like a headed bolt. It's almost like a, I think it's almost like a shear bolt. One of these where you spin them in with an impact or something. When they get to the right torque, they shear off. But that means there's no way of getting the bastards back out. If that's not the case, then the heads have literally just corroded away to nothing. That one, I've got the Dremel flexi, uh, Dremel with the flexi head on, I've cut him. Uh, there's one here somewhere, it's hard to find where I'm looking. Great camera, where, yep, yeah, there we go, that's the second one. And then there's one over the top, which I can't quite get you in to see. I think that's still going, yeah. Can't quite get you in to see, there's one at the top somewhere. Perhaps I can get you in, I don't know. But I've, uh, I've started cutting him, and uh, that's where I am now, there he is, I think. So I'm going to finish cutting him off, and then hopefully get this box out of here. Once I've got that out, I can then get this rubber joint out of here, gives me a bit more room, and then we're going to start going for the diff mountings bolts. I think there's three holding this on. There's one at this end offset and then there's two at the other. One I think we have to go in through the boot to get to. But yeah, we'll do that in a minute. Oh, that's the handbrake cable. 
it's handy because that goes in the way in a minute so I'll pull that in a minute and find out what's keeping him up here right so I'm going to pause you for a sec and carry on cutting that bolt and then I'll switch the camera back on I've eventually got that top one cut off um, I cut it most of the way the, the um, disc on the Dremel not quite big enough to go right through unfortunately diameter wise so I had to then get in at the top with a little tiny chisel and a hammer to just cut that last little tiny bit off. Pain, but she's now apart. So next job is going to be dropping the rear boxes. Um, there's a nerf strap on this rear one I noticed which goes up to the body. I'll pull him first and then I'll start um, trying to find the rubber mounts and start slackening them off and we'll get this exhaust out of it. Right, so I'll turn you back on in a minute. At the back of the car, uh, rear, rear box, and I've got another earth strap on him. Try to keep the camera still. There she is. So we've got to get that off next. So there's two of these little earth straps. I've never seen an exhaust system earthed in before. I don't know what that like shoelace thing is, which is tied around it, but. It's obviously there, so we'll take him. But there's the little 10mm AF M6 bolt. I'm going to take that off. And then, like I say, we'll drop the exhaust. The exhaust boxes are off. So they're both joined. I would imagine, because this, this middle one is pretty rotten. Although, having said that, it's not... It's only like an outer skin. The inner skin still seems okay, and there's no blows. Um, I'm not quite sure why they have this dual skin set up. I'm not, I'll have to assess what she's like. I can get all the crap off and it's still okay, then I'll leave it. But there's like a, a swage here, and then it's welded. I would imagine if I grind the weld, I can release that box, buy a new one, and then clamp it. This box looks fine, the rear one. Um, to get him off, there was two rubbers on this hook here, one each side, and then just that one there slides over a front rubber, which is actually not too bad because that, once you just leave that one on, uh, fight with these two because you've got to get the rubbers off the hooks, and that's always a bastard. Um, but once you get them off, you can then push the exhaust forward and then disengage that and the whole thing then just drops on your head <laughs> if you're not careful. Um, I put a trolley jack under it which took the weight and I just let it down after that and you can see that front uh, joint there. Anyway she's off so that's cool we'll go under again in a minute with the camera and have a look around see what's going on next. Right with the um, exhaust off see where she went the heat shield here seems to be totally buggered I should probably have to either do a repair or get a new one because uh, all the fixings have rotted through. <clears throat> that there is one of the mounts for the rear subframe, which we'll be getting going to later. Um, dry shaft above my head, I'm sure you can see. Um, yeah, that's where the exhaust was hiding that part of the rear subframe. A little bit of surface corrosion, not too horrendous. Uh, I should get the handbrake cables out next, I think. Um, Prop shaft is already released from this flexi. Um, up in the back here, I'm not sure you can see, there's a thin head of a bolt there. It's got to come out to get the diff off. And there's another one this side, but there seems to be a rubber, a rubber grommet here. I'm not sure I can find it in the viewfinder. Um, which I think we come at that fixing from the inside the car, probably in the spare wheel well. Pull the grommet, get a socket on the bolt. So two bolts here, one at the front, and I'm hoping the rear diff and drive shafts will be gone. And then we'll be down to dropping the rear subframe, so that'd be cool. That's basically where I want to get to today if I can. Um, yeah, having a bit of a look around. Sorry you're upside down now, but that's going to be a fighty job later, taking those remaining bits of stud out of that end of the exhaust. Front box looks okay still. So this car's 19 years old. Um, I had it at seven. It's just been sat outside getting worse. I bought it and didn't have anywhere to do it. Um, now I have, so it's that time. A bit of corrosion on the lines. I think they might be fuel. It's hard to tell at the moment because I think brakes are that side. 
So I think there are fuel lines, I don't know. Um, could be, I don't know actually. Don't know, but there's corrosion on it. I'll have to clean all that off, get it nice. Anyway, so my next job is going to be getting the handbrakes off, handbrake cables off. They're just looped on, so there's nothing big about that, nothing difficult. Um, yeah, just unhook them and then feed the cables out the way. So I'm going to do that next and uh, also try and get this rubber coupling out between the dry shaft and the diff. And then we'll start to get the bolts of the diff out. Anyway, catch in a bit. Maybe you can see this, the diff is out with its dry shafts. I just lowered it on the trolley. <clears throat> right, the front, there's two bolts at the back. You should be able to see one of them there. The other one's around the corner there. The other one, the one you can hardly see, gets through the boot. This one you can get on here. And there's one at the front, which goes into there. Um, where am I looking? Yeah, into there. All right, that one there, it's got a captive nut in the top. And mine was going round. Now on the back of that beam, I don't know if you can see it, that it sure it makes out. There is a cutout, you can get a socket in there. I managed to get my seven, I think it's a 16 or a 17 mil, 17 mil socket on the end of a slim, uh, not a wrench, but just a, a socket holder. Here it is, this one here. I managed to get that in through the top, hold it, and undid it, and down she's come. So that's a that's a good one. This is uh, where I wanted to be. So the next job is going to be probably release the springs and the shocks. I'll probably release the shocks. Uh, see what hydraulic lines we've got connected to this subframe. Hopefully they're not, they're connected to the car, but we don't know that yet. Uh, I can see an ABS cable is connected to the subframe, so I'll have to release all that. And then we're going to have a go at probably two trolley jacks in under this. Uh, release all the bolts and then lower them down and get him out from under the car. And we are really starting to get somewhere. See the end of the prop shaft, that's the flexi coupling. Yep. Uh, see the end of the exhaust over there. But yeah, we are <coughs> really getting somewhere now. Um, hope to have, again, it's, it's, it's only surface rust. It looks, looks pretty bad until you start wiping it off and then it actually doesn't look too bad at all. So I'm gonna get all this off, get the car apart, get it all nice and cleaned up. Once I get the subframe off, I wanna raise the back end a little bit higher on the stands, go another, another notch. Um, so I can get under here and start clearing off some of the corrosion which you can see around the place over there, look there's some nice so yeah that's it for this video um, if this floats your boat join us for the next one uh, ring the bell and all that stuff and I'll keep making them, you keep watching I'll keep making right let's catch you in the next one, bye then